Hi everyone, I'm Lee Packett and you're watching The Business of Law. Uh, special guest today is Bruce McEwen and you might be thinking to yourself, Lee, you just had Bruce on the show about a month ago and you would be absolutely right, but he's here because I goofed. Last time he was on the show, he dropped a really hot take and uh, I just missed it. I was uh, very uh, anxious to get my initial question answered and uh, I totally missed it. So Bruce, thanks for coming back. Thanks for braving the cold again to Pleasure. help us uh, figure this out. Uh, I'm gonna roll the tape now. Let's take a look at the quote and we can take it from there. Sounds good. What I'm really waiting for in law firm combinations, Lee, is a transformative US-UK merger. Really? We haven't seen it yet. Hogan Lovell's was as close as we've seen, but it's not really what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not talking about Verines because that's a, that's a topic for another day. I think right. one, of, one or more of them is gonna blow up in the next Why haven't years. we seen one yet, in your view? That's, that's an interesting comment. One or more Verines could be in danger of failing uh, in coming years. Um, there's not a lot of Verines out there. We're talking about, what, seven or eight firms at the end of the day? That's about right. What did you mean by that? I, I try to approach it from the angle of um, what is the value proposition to the client, so of, of a Verine. Mm -hmm. And you know as well as I that there's this old saw, you hire the lawyer or you hire the law firm. Um, well, I think that's a, ultimately a a uh, feckless debate, but let's assume you're going to hire a lawyer. So whether he's in a Verine or he's in Cravat, it doesn't matter. You're going to hire the guy, right? So Verines don't benefit that way unless they have a couple of superstars, but you're going to go after the guy, and if he leaves, he's gone. If you're going to hire a firm, you're presumably doing it, and I think GCs are increasingly hiring firms because it has integrated capability in an area that's important to you. That could be geographic capability, you know, global, London and New York, Hong Kong and Beijing, whatever. Um, it could be practice area capability, white collar, you know, FINRA investigations. Um, you don't get either in a Verine. Right. It's not integrated. The, my other major point about this, Lee, there are inherent um, centripetal forces in law firms all the time. People are always looking to see if the grass might not be greener, if they could make another 15% or 25% somewhere else, if that firm's on a roll and maybe our firm is kind of treading water. Um, those centripetal forces are just as strong in Verines as they are in any other law firm, but the centrifugal forces, the ones that are pulling people together to stay in the firm, to keep it together, are very weak. It's not a firm. Right. They never scrambled the eggs. They will admit it. So when we're talking about uh, that group of seven or eight firms, do you have one or more in particular that you know is facing something traumatic coming up, or are you just looking at the market saying something doesn't add up here? I'm really just looking at the market. Mm -hmm. we, just saw, we just saw Denton's you know, double down or quadruple down. Um, on its bed in, in Verine land. Yeah. Um, that's, that's its own case at this point. But I would really be surprised if we don't see one or more Verines blow up because it's so easy just to pull them apart again. They never came together. Yeah, of course, you're, you're referencing uh, Denton's going into a merger transaction with Da Chang, a massive Chinese firm, 4,000 attorneys. Um, you had a really interesting article on your, uh, on your website about the deal saying that your initial thoughts uh, really look to how uh, Da Chang has not only a presence in the major cities in China, <coughs> like Beijing and China, but they also have a well-established presence in the next 10 largest cities in China. It's really about accessing the middle tier market. They are um, all over China. And I don't mean to say middle tier because they're all massive cities when you look at that list. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of business, a lot of people there. Um, how do you feel about the deal today? Is that still your, your thought? It's still my working hypothesis, meaning I don't have a better idea yet at this point, but Da Chang is unlike any, you know, remotely, it's remotely unlike any Amlaw 200 firm. Their average revenue per lawyer is about $80,000 right. US. Um, and as you said, they're massive, and they're everywhere. It's, they're not just in the 10 second cities in China, they're probably in 100 or 200 cities in China. 
I mean, they're, I hate to say it, but they're like the H&R block of China. You know, mm -hmm. they're everywhere. And trying to make sense of that deal, it struck me that what they may be trying to do is link a Denton's lawyer to those 200 cities. So that if there are people in those 200 cities who want to do something outside China, to your point, there's a lot of capital and a lot of economic activity in those cities. Um, who are you going to go to? You've never heard of Cravath. You've never right. heard of Clifford Chance. It's about referrals. It's about referrals. And here's my friend from Da Chang who's connected to Denton's, and Denton's is everywhere in the West. That might make sense. Yeah. It's, it's a fascinating deal, and the more I talk to people, the more the answer is, well, let's, let's wait and see. Let's see how this goes. Uh, for those people who are paying very, very close attention to how this deal unfolds, what's the next point in the road that you're most interested in seeing? What's going to be the moment where we're going to have greater clarity on what this deal is going to mean, not only for the firm, but also for the market? I'd give you two answers, uh, Lee, and the, you know, the economist in me is going to be responsible for the first answer, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, let's see what the first set of truly consolidated financials looks like, you know, versus pro forma before. And, and then adjust it for whatever's happened in the market and the global economy and headcount and the CPI and everything else. Um, so that it's, you know, as much as possible an apples to apples comparison. That's obviously, that's obviously important. The proof is in the pudding. This is a capitalist enterprise. Mm -hmm. But let me follow that capitalist enterprise observation with my second thought, which is, as you know, uh, lawyers in China pledge uh, loyalty to the Communist Party, first and foremost. Um, before the bar, before the profession, before any such, you know, wild concept as the rule of law. So I think the second early indicator I would look for is whether clients get spooked um, about the primary loyalty of Da Chang lawyers and also about the obvious, obvious cybersecurity issues right. with China. Right, which can't really be overstated as much as the media runs wild with um, those discussions. Friend they're of mine. real. I mean, if you're doing work with that firm and all of a sudden these issues became increasingly more complicated and sensitive, um, it's tough to be in the client's head at that moment to see uh, what they're thinking. A guy I, I, I heard of, um, American, went to China, Beijing for, for business, um, working for a law firm. Um, checked into his hotel room, went down to leave for dinner, realized he'd forgotten something, went back upstairs, and there was a guy cloning his hard drive hmm. of his laptop in the hotel room that fast. That's a different, different business environment than the one that we're used to, I think. Um, I want to pick up on something we were talking about in the green room. Uh, we were talking about the, uh, the hollow middle in the, in the AMLA 200. Um, you were saying it's going to be the big story for the next 10 years. And I was wondering if it's a story other than one of consolidation. Uh, can you flesh out your thoughts a little bit on this group of, well, first let's define this group. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. let, let, me, let me back up. Figure out where they're going tell afterwards. You, tell you what, I, what the hollow middle means to me. Um, I think we need to start from the premise which we've seen um, just accelerating ever since the meltdown in 2008 of 20 firms roughly achieving escape velocity. Right. You know, they are putting an unbridgeable gulf between themselves and the rest of the industry in right. terms of performance on any metric you want to look at, profits per partner, revenue per lawyer, blue chip clients, realization, hourly rates. Um, and, you know, we know who they are. A lot of them are within you know, zip codes immediately surrounding us. And the question, if you're not in one of those golden 20, and they, they know who they are, is whether it's too late. Mm -hmm. I think, basically, unless you're going to pull a rabbit out of a hat like a Quinn Emanuel or a Boy Schiller, 
um, which obviously depend on incredibly powerful personalities, mm -hmm. which can't be cloned. Mm -hmm. um, my opinion is it's too late. So if you're a, a generic, you know, Amlaw 30 to 130 kind of firm, what are you going to do? You're not premium, elite, bet the company, boardroom level attention. You're not Littler or Ogletree or Jackson Lewis doing one thing really, really well with consistent quality for a very fair price. You're just kind of a no destination for nothing in particular law firm. You mentioned consolidation, and a lot of people, I think, including some of the leaders of these firms, if I had to guess, think that consolidation is their salvation if you're in that group. We'll just bulk up, you know, client, more clients will find us because we'll be more places mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, I think that would be like merging Oldsmobile and Pontiac. I don't see what it gets you. Right. Um, but I wonder, what's the alternative? I mean, what else can you do? Um, you can do one thing, which is very difficult uh, for lawyers, because it requires saying no a hell of a lot more than you're going to be able to say yes, and that's pick a focus, one or two, mm -hmm. not ten. But focus on one or two things. It could be a geography, it could be a practice area, but cut everything else out of your firm that doesn't serve that focus. So clients will begin to think, um, you know, oh, Alston and Bird, Nixon Peabody, you know, um, Sutherland Asbell. I, I'm just picking these names out of a hat. These firms now stand for something. Right. I know they have an what, identity. They have an identity. So the move we saw, uh, I guess it was probably eight weeks ago. Wiley Ryan hewing off its bankruptcy group and casting them adrift, that's going to become more and more prevalent going forward? I think it is. And understand something. That's not the worst thing for the cast-offs, quote unquote, mm -hmm. because they're now an instant boutique. Mm -hmm. um, they get a chance to focus, if you will, without the overhead of the rest of Wiley Ryan that presumably wasn't doing them much good and they were not terribly appreciated at Wiley Ryan. It's like Debevoise at a different level casting off the T&E group. Um, you're not a core competence at Debevoise if you're a T&E lawyer. You really aren't. And if I were a T&E lawyer there, I would think, hmm, the pastures could be greener. This is a process, of course, that requires brutal honesty and um, a lot of courage. It's, it's not something that I have questions as to when a process like that would take place in earnest within the AMLA 200. Do you think, do you have any sense that we're close to something like that happening? Well, you and me both have, have doubts about that, Lee. Um, it does require courage. Um, it requires, frankly, looking a little bit over the horizon, which lawyers are uncomfortable with. We want proof beyond a reasonable doubt that something is going to work. Mm -hmm. Life doesn't welcome, work like that. <laughs> welcome to the business world. Right. A friend of mine was uh, chief operating officer of an AMLAW 100. And he said, any time a deal came before the executive committee that had any hair on it, they would turn it down. He said, every deal is hairy. Every deal is hairy. Lawyers don't do well with that, which leads me to um, why I think this is going to be the big story of the next 10 years. A lot of firms aren't going to have the courage, the intestinal fortitude to do this. They're going to remain stuck in the hollow middle. Now, that's, that's not necessarily an apocalyptic sentence, but it's a sentence, in my opinion, to irrelevance. Bruce, always a pleasure. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you.
That's Bruce McEwen, consultant to law firms and publisher at Adam Smith Esquire. If you'd like to see more of the stuff we're working on, be sure to go check us out online. You can find us at mimesiswebtv.com. You can also find us on YouTube and Twitter. I'm Lee Pacquia. Thanks for watching.